Adobe Lightroom is probably the most popular photo editing app there is right now and if you use it, there is a few tips that I consider baseline you need to know if you are to speed up your workflow and boost your productivity. This is especially important if you are like me and you got invited to a graduation party and you collected how many of these? 488 photos. You really can't go over all these photos, editing them one by one. You'll be here until Elon Musk lands on Mars or something. Now brace yourselves. Let me give you the three most important tips that I know, that I use, and they have really saved my life. So here we are on Lightroom. I took very many photos over the weekend. And as you can see, they're not really very professional photos. They're just, you know, quick snaps that I was taking for memory. And so the first tip you need to know is auto sync. So what happens here is once you've imported all your photos into Lightroom and you're in the library tab, just take a quick look at your photos and select all the photos that look like they have similar lighting conditions that will probably benefit from the same edit. All these photos from about number 38 to number 103 we're taken on this staircase with a very bright window in the background and uh, these are probably similar photos. So what I've done here is select them all by just selecting the first photo and holding shift and clicking on the last photo. And then I head over to the develop module. At this stage, I don't really mind which edits I'll really go with at the end. But what I want to do is just give them a few edits that will affect all the photos at once. And I'll use this feature in Lightroom called auto sync. So we head over to this bottom right corner where there is a sync button and on the left of it is a small switch. Once you turn that on, auto sync is on. And with that, whatever edit I will do on any photo will affect all the photos that I have selected. So let's decide and use this photo. I like to first start by doing some lens corrections, enable profile corrections. Next, I go and correct the white balance. I'll try to select a place that is supposed to be white in real life. I don't think there is any place, maybe apart from these teeth. Next, I'd like to bring up the exposure a little bit because as you can see, this photo is generally dark despite this bright wind over here. So I'll just give it a little bit of an exposure boost, probably about one stop. I also like to bring up the contrast a little bit by about, you know, less than 20. And as you can already see down here, all these photos that are selected have been affected by the edits that I've made to this one photo because the auto sync button is on. And that's a nice thing. Next, we'll go for the whites, bring them down a little bit. And uh, the blacks need to go up just a bit. As you can see, the photo is much better than where we started. I like to bring down the texture just a bit so that, you know, the faces look smoother. You see, these are ladies, usually they prefer their faces smoother. So the texture goes down a little bit, the clarity up just a bit. And just with this auto sync feature turned on, we've done our corrections for not less than 50 photos. Quite a lifesaver, you should use this. And we're now on to our second tip and this will be marking your photos. There's various things you could do to accomplish what I'm going to show you in this one. But basically at the end, what we want is to select which photos we'll actually use. You see, once you take 488 photos, chances are a lot of them are terrible. Especially if you are a not so good photographer like me. Let's jump back to the library module. Now for this tip, let's use these portrait photos from about number 437 all the way to number 470 that we took towards the end of the party. What I do is basically double click on the first one and just start scrolling them using the arrow keys. My preferred method for marking the photos that I'll actually use is using the star rating. If you press any of the buttons on your keyboard from number one to number five, they will give that specific photo a number of stars. And I just use number five to give it five stars. So any photo that I like, I go five on it. This first one, for example, the lady is smiling quite well. Let's give it a five. Next, maybe five. Next, uh, something happened to her eyes over there. Let's keep that. Next, this looks like a good photo, kind of. Five, next. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can take this and leave this one. Let's give this a four and uh, head over to... This, give it a five. 
and so on. So you guys get what I'm doing over here. So once we head over to the develop tab, as you can see down here, there's a small writing called filter, filters off. What I do is click on the filters off and uh, select rated, then click the fifth star. Now the photos that I rated five stars appear down here. As you can see, the photos that I did not rate have disappeared, but they are just kind of in the library. And I can go ahead and edit the ones that I liked. And with this simple technique, the 488 photos that I have can easily be filtered down to about 100 photos that I can edit and share. Now the last tip is actually to create a preset. Now a preset is basically just a bunch of settings that you can save and apply them to similar photos in a catalog or even in your future projects. Now let's go back in and let me show you how that is done. So we have one photo here selected on the develop tab and we can do a bunch of edits on it as always. I enable profile corrections. We go over here, the exposure looks right. Contrast goes up a little bit. Highlights go down quite a bit. A few moments later. And with that, we're done doing our simple edits on this photo. And if I hit the backslash key, you can see how the photo looked before and now after. Now to create a preset, I head over to the develop menu, new preset, and just give it a name. I can call it Dickens 2 or 3 or 4. Or five and down here you can select whichever settings you'd like the preset to have and click create and with that you have your preset saved next you can head back to the library remove our filter and you'll see all your photos and we can decide to apply that preset to all the photos from number say 434 to 470 because they looked like they were taken at around the same place same time so i select all of them come right here to quick develop as you can see saved preset over here and user presets Dickens 3 and that will apply the preset for all these images that are selected and that is it guys with that you have all your images batch edited it's very fast and simple you need to use these tips if you don't already do and so friends that is it for today if you like this video like it there's a like button below if you're not already subscribed feel very welcome aboard I make weekly videos on productivity and digital life I'd not like you missing any of them so don't also forget to click the notification bell so that you do not miss next week's video. See you in the next one and as always, no pressure.